This year marks the 35th anniversary of the release of one of Oliver Stone's greatest films. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Yeah, Wall Street. A controversial movie that has been celebrated, criticized, glorified, misunderstood, technically revered, and also martyrized throughout the years. In other words, a vintage Oliver Stone movie. Right after the critical and commercial success of Platoon, Stone decided to go to war in another jungle, a concrete jungle called Wall Street. He got inspiration from his father, who was a stockbroker for many years, and gave birth to Bud Fox and Gordon Gecko, two faces of the same coin with just one line separating them. The grounding power of family. Wall Street is set in 1985 and tells the story of young and hungry Bud Fox who uses insider trading to entice legendary investor Gordon Gecko into mentoring him. Soon, Bud gets hypnotized by Gecko's life philosophy and the perks that come with playing dirty. However, he has to reckon with a heavy conscience when one of Gecko's slimy tricks threatens the sustainability of an entire airline company and by proxy, the livelihood of Bud's father. One day you're gonna be proud of me. You'll see. It's yourself you gotta be proud of, Huckleberry. Stone is a big fan of Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, usually setting a well-intended protagonist against an environment that tests his morality. In that sense, Wall Street is classic storytelling with its themes of good and evil perfectly laid out and identified. What Stone excels at is the depth and nuance he gives to the two main characters, something that results into a shot worth a thousand words. More precisely, this shot. Notice that it's just one of two shots in this film, we'll get to the second one a little later, in which the lighting doesn't quite make sense in terms of its source. Let's take another look. See that background? The light shifts without the environment around Gecko changing, and suddenly he's framed against total blackness, his body being the only light cutting through the dark, as if he was some sort of savior, some sort of messiah, which is exactly how Bud sees him. Now, there's a deeper meaning to this. In the previous scene at the sauna, Bud, who had been given money to invest, a sort of test from Gecko, tells his new mentor that he lost a hundred grand of his money. If there's one thing Gecko hates, it's losses. Naturally, the young gun needs to be taught a lesson. In the very next scene, the scene with a shot that defines this video, Gecko tells Bud he only bets on sure things. And then he quotes Sun Tzu. Every battle is won before it's ever fought. This is important because Gecko is playing the long game. He identified in Bud a very valuable business opportunity, that of buying the airline his father works for and selling it for parts. And this moment right here is the moment when he finally gets to put Bud in his back pocket. He knows that after this, he has him. Gecko knew that Bud was going to inevitably lose some of his money due to inexperience, and now he's threatening to walk away, which really is just a manipulation technique to further reel in a desperate Bud. After all, a hundred grand means nothing to Gecko today if he can make a hundred million tomorrow. So when Gecko says that battles are won before being fought, he's talking about the battle happening right now, the one Bud isn't even aware he's fighting. What comes next is a masterclass in the seat by Gecko. He starts by downplaying Bud's abilities, by hurting his confidence and ego. You're not as smart as I thought you were, buddy boy. And then he appeals to his own sense of grandeur and ego, saying he's been in this industry for a long time, and he knows better than anyone how the game is played. In other words, he knows that this battle was won a long time ago and that Bud will do whatever it takes to remain in Gecko's sphere of influence, which is exactly what our devilish figure needs in order to get Bud to betray his father and unknowingly sell out the airline. The way Gecko reels Bud in is skillfully done, showcasing just how intelligent he is in terms of planning and thinking ahead. You see, early in the film, he talks about information and how it's the most valuable currency in existence. The most valuable commodity I know of is information. Wouldn't you agree? After planting that mentality in Bud's head, Gecko now uses it to strike a deadly blow. He tells Bud that if he wants another shot, if he wants to continue being mentored by Gecko, if he wants his lifestyle, then he has to bring him something he doesn't already know. You want another chance? Fucking A! And you stop sending me information, and you start getting me some. And that's exactly when we get our shot. And in the next scene, Gecko gets to hear what he's been waiting for. All right, Mr. Gecko. You got me. The journey that follows is invariably dark and sees Bud giving in to his worst instincts, gaining unmerited confidence and succumbing to the very essence of what greed is and what greed does. The twist, the one unforeseen consequence in Gecko's brilliant plan is Bud's father, 
whose morality has been passed down and is still somewhere deep inside Bud. When Bud learns of Gecko's plan to wreck his father's airline, which propels the old man to have a heart attack, Bud makes a U-turn and rethinks his life and his values. His goal is to now save the airline, and for that, he's going to join forces with Gecko's arch nemesis, played by the usually excellent Terrence Stamp. The scheme involves inflating the airline's stock, then crashing it until Gecko is forced to dump it all. At that point, Stamp will come in and buy everything, becoming the majority shareholder. The sequences that follow are written and filmed expertly and see Bud Fox becoming Gecko, the student surpassing the master at least this one time. When Gecko realizes what's going on, Stone shoots a close-up of Bud, employing the same devilish tactics he learned from his mentor. He first regurgitates back to Gecko what he once said. You once told me don't get emotional about stock, Gordon. Don't. And then forces his hand by saying the market will close in just two minutes. Faced with an impossible conundrum, Gecko says the only thing he can in order to rescue a minuscule part of his investment. Dump it. We get the bookend to the shot at the gym that saw Gecko in full light framed against total blackness. This time, Gecko is covered in the darkness. He no longer has the light shining through him, or better yet, he cannot cut through the darkness he invited into his life. This becomes the end point of greed, the end point of what greed is and what it does. It takes away the light inside of every man. And with that, Bud wins the new battle, the battle Gecko wasn't even aware was being fought. Sun Tzu would be proud. But the story isn't done for Bud, who shortly after faces his own comeuppance. Because Stone understands that it's not only about doing the right thing after doing the wrong thing for so long, but it's about facing the consequences of one's own actions. In one of the film's most affecting sequences, we see Bud, fresh off his win against Gecko, going back to his office elated. This time, however, the office isn't bustling as usual, something's off. Bud asks his fellow trader if someone died, to which he replies, Yeah. Bud continues to walk to his office, but is stopped by yet another trader, one that throughout the film served as a sort of Jiminy Cricket, a moral man in an otherwise immoral world, and gives Bud a final word of wisdom. Man looks in the abyss. There's nothing staring back at him. At that moment, man finds his character. And that is what keeps him out of the abyss. Bud says he thinks he gets it, and shortly after, he's arrested for insider trading. The film ends with Bud walking up the stairs of the courthouse in New York and the camera pulling back, as if saying that this is just one story in a sea of, quote, the malfunctioning corporation that is the USA.